Let's go to London now and catch up with former Foreign Minister Alexander Downer. Thanks for joining us again, Alexander. I want to get your thoughts first on governments and their management, continued uh, revelations about the way governments have managed the pandemic, especially in Britain. You've been seeing all these Hancock uh, revelations, the WhatsApp messages. They just show this high level of cynicism with uh, the Tory government there using fear, really, as a weapon to control the population and, and, and keep their onerous measures in place. Yes, I mean, this does uh, this um, revelation of all these WhatsApp messages, the fact that they've been revealed is an extraordinary thing in and, in and of itself. But what it does show is that the British government um, basically ran a fear campaign to lock people down and it was very much driven by politics. Um, the government um, realised that politically it was to its advantage to scare people and to um, encourage them to comply with lockdowns. And so instead of following the science, which was what the politicians always told us they were doing, it's been revealed that the only science they were following was political science. Um, and it's clear that this has been happening in Australia as well. So um, it, it, it is quite a scandal, really. Well, it is scandalous. And, and, and this is the point. There's such a common thread over the way governments have reacted. And, and it crosses party lines. They're left of centre governments and right of centre governments. And it's, and it's this same theory. We, we see from Daniel Andrews, he claims all along virtually just to be a cipher for the medical advice. Uh, suggesting there's no real uh, political decisions uh, making placed over the top of the medical advice, yet we, yeah. it's revealed quite the opposite was in play the whole way through. One of the um, revelations here in the UK, which is something I confess to know a bit about, is that within the British government in the Cabinet Office, there's something called the Nudge Unit, the Behavioural yep. Insights Unit. Um, and what this nudge unit um, is used for is to encourage the public to do certain things. In other words, to influence public behaviour. Um, so telling people that you are following the science, uh, that sounded quite convincing. We should always follow the science has become a, uh, a trope of the era. Not that people do, but, um, but in any case. Um, and... Uh, and and so it gives gives the impression gave the impression that governments really didn't have any choice. And then a scare campaign, you know, creating the impression that if you didn't follow all the lockdown rules, um, then you would die. Mm. I remember an opinion poll in Australia during the lockdowns showing that um, people 30, 33 percent of Australians thought they would die if they contracted COVID. I That's mean, that right. just shows you how successful the state governments were in running scare campaigns about it. No, no, they didn't follow the science at all. They followed the political science. I followed the science from day one, and it was it was clear all the way through that they were creating unnecessary fear. For instance, it was very clear early on that children had nothing to fear. That the, that the flu was much much more of a threat to children than COVID, yet, yet this was just ignored and they shut down schools around the country. And you mentioned that nudge unit in the UK, the coalition government in New South Wales also had such a nudge unit. It's, it's an absolute disgrace. And there are still people kept from work by vaccine mandates in Australia today. All the state governments um, have a, uh, and the federal government have a nudge unit. They all, they all do it and so they do in other... Yeah. countries as well um, yeah there's no doubt about this um the the truth um, one day will come out about um how this whole covid issue was managed and i you know people have called for royal commissions and commissions of inquiry in the uk it's not a royal commission but in the uk there is a commission of inquiry which is um going through all the material at the moment but yeah. i mean i do do say this the difference between the advice that the um, chief scientific officer and the chief medical officer in the UK were giving and the messages that were coming out, particularly from the health minister, Matt Hancock, um, it's extremely revealing.